Hello, and welcome to Arlington National Cemetery's Tomb of the Unknown Soldier Centennial Commemoration Lecture Series. My name is Allison Finkelstein, and I serve as Arlington's Senior Historian. For this episode, our featured expert is Benjamin D. Brands, who works as a historian with the American Battle Monuments Commission. Brands is also a PhD candidate in history at George Mason University. He previously served as an infantry officer in the United States Army, and he has taught military history at the United States Military Academy at West Point and Oregon State University. Brand's talk in this episode focuses on the connections between the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and America's overseas military cemeteries. He explores the shared mission of Arlington National Cemetery and the American Battle Monuments Commission in honoring and remembering America's unknown fallen service members. This story is critical to understanding the history of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode titled Those Who Lay in France, the American Battle Monuments Commission and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Today I'm going to talk briefly about the connections between the American Battle Monuments Commission and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. To start, the American Battle Monuments Commission, or ABMC, is a small federal agency tasked with administering America's overseas military cemeteries and monuments. The commission was originally created to design and build the World War I commemorative program of monuments and cemeteries. And over the years, our agency's mission has expanded to honor troops from other American wars. Currently, ABMC administers 26 cemeteries and 32 monuments spread across 17 countries. ABMC is connected to the tomb at Arlington, both practically and spiritually. The unknowns of World War I and World War II were drawn from ABMC cemeteries. But perhaps more importantly, both ABMC and the tomb share a mission of remembering and honoring America's war dead. I'll talk a little about both of these connections today. Much like the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, the American Battle Monuments Commission's origins date to the massive death of the First World War. During World War I, the over 80,000 American war dead in Europe were buried close to where they fell in some 2,300 temporary cemeteries. The Army's Graves Registration Service, or AGRS, had taken great effort to properly identify the dead and mark their graves. But the chaos of combat and the destruction of modern weaponry meant that over 1,600 remains were unidentified at the end of the war, amongst a total of over 4,000 missing in action. Following the end of the war, America had to decide what to do with its fallen troops. A great deal of debate attended this decision, with proponents arguing for the repatriation of all dead and others advocating for permanent internment near where they fell, as was the practice of our British and French allies. Unlike the other nations involved in the war, the United States ultimately decided to offer the next of kin a choice of whether to have their loved ones repatriated to the United States or permanently interred in an overseas military cemetery. Approximately 40% of families chose to have their loved ones interred overseas. Between 1920 and 1922, the Graves Registration Service conducted a massive reburial program repatriating remains back to the United States according to the wishes of their families, and concentrating the remains of those whose loved ones had chose overseas burial from the 2,300 temporary cemeteries into eight permanent cemeteries, containing nearly 31,000 burials. While the families of the known dead were offered the choice between repatriation and permanent interment overseas, all of the 1,600 unknowns were buried in the overseas cemeteries. While this effort was ongoing, Congress created the American Battle Monuments Commission in 1923 with the mission of designing and constructing a series of monuments in Europe to commemorate the achievements of the American Expeditionary Forces, the AEF, during the First World War. Soon after its creation, the agency was also given the mission of constructing and administering the permanent American overseas cemeteries. From 1925 to 1933, ABMC oversaw the design and construction of these permanent cemeteries, which were formally dedicated in 1937. In addition to these eight cemeteries, the Commission also designed and constructed 13 memorials and markers throughout Europe to honor the major battles and achievements of the AEF. Britain and France had left their fallen in cemeteries near where they fell, but two years after the war, on Armistice Day, 1920, each nation 
ceremoniously buried a single set of unknown remains to represent all of the unknown fallen. The French unknown was entombed under the Arc de Triomphe, while the British unknown was entombed at Westminster Abbey. Inspired by the example of her allies, the United States determined to bring a single set of unknown remains home to America. During congressional testimony in favor of such a tomb, General John J. Pershing, commander of the AEF and the future chairman of ABMC, stated that the tomb would be a very fitting tribute for the nation to pay, not only to the unknown dead, but to all who gave their lives. We cannot do too much to honor those who lie in France. From the beginning then, the tomb was viewed as honoring not just the single unknown buried there, but also as symbolically connecting mourners in America to those fallen who lay in the cemeteries overseas, as well as in unknown graves. The plaza in front of the newly dedicated Memorial Amphitheater at Arlington National Cemetery was selected as the location for the tomb. And on November 11, 1921, Armistice Day at the time, and now celebrated as Veterans Day, was selected for the funeral ceremony. An elaborate process was undertaken to select this unknown soldier in 1921. This process served two main goals, demonstrating the honor and respect America paid to its war dead, and ensuring the internal anonymity of the remains within the tomb of the unknown soldier. To these ends, one set of unidentified remains was exhumed from four of the permanent American Battle Monuments Commission cemeteries, then still under the control of the AGRS. These cemeteries were selected as they represented the four major fronts or campaigns that Americans fought on during the Great War. Ain Marne American Cemetery for the early fighting at Belleau Wood and Chateau Thierry in the subsequent Ain Marne Offensive. Somme American Cemetery to represent the American troops who fought under British command in Northern France. St. Mihiel American Cemetery for the first major American-led offensive and Meuse-Argonne American Cemetery for the grand offensive that ended the war. An officer was assigned to each cemetery where he opened sealed orders specifying which unknown grave to exhume, as well as an alternate should the first remains be found to have some sort of identifying feature or other issue. The exhumations occurred simultaneously at all four cemeteries on October 22, 1921. The bodies were thoroughly examined for any identifying information and all paperwork associated with each set of remains was subsequently destroyed to ensure the unknowns could never be identified. The next day, the four caskets were transported to the city hall in chalon sur marne known today as Chalon and Champagne. The caskets were solemnly laid out there and guarded overnight by an honor guard from the French and United States armies. Early on the morning of October 24th, the caskets were removed from their shipping containers and rearranged ensuring that the bodies were completely anonymous and could not be connected to a specific cemetery. A solemn selection ceremony was held later that morning. Following speeches from French and American generals, Sergeant Edward F. Younger, a decorated veteran of the war, selected one of the caskets by placing a spray of white roses on it. The newly selected unknown was placed in a specially designed casket and moved to the main hall, where for several hours, a continuous procession of French citizens filed through to pay their respects. The casket was then loaded on a caisson, and a grand procession escorted it to the train station. The unknown was transported by train to Paris, and subsequently to the port of Le Havre, where the USS Olympia waited to carry it across the Atlantic. Even before the newly selected unknown departed Chalon, the process of reinterring the three unselected candidates began. They were transported by truck to Meuse Argonne American Cemetery for immediate permanent burial that same day. They were assigned new unknown numbers, and after a brief ceremony, they were reburied in graves 1, 2, and 3 of row 1, plot G, where they remain today. These three unknowns, along with the other 1,600 World War I unknowns, continue to be honored at ABMC's cemeteries. Their headstones bear the same inscription as the tomb at Arlington. Here rests, in honored glory, an American soldier known but to God. The unknown finished his long journey to Washington, D.C. on November 9, 1921, and lay in state in the U.S. Capitol Rotunda until Armistice Day, when a procession carried it from the Capitol to Arlington National Cemetery. There the unknown was entombed on the eastern plaza of the Memorial Amphitheater. Further emphasizing the connection to ABMC and the unknown still buried in France, the casket was covered with a layer of French soil 
brought from Seren American Cemetery. America's entry into another global war in 1941, this one costing the lives of over 400,000 Americans, soon expanded the mission of both ABMC and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Following the example of World War I, families were again offered a choice of repatriation or burial overseas, resulting in the creation of 14 World War II overseas cemeteries with over 90,000 burials. Legislation was also passed to entomb a single unknown from the war at Arlington, but the selection of those remains was delayed by the Korean War until 1958, when remains from both World War II and the Korean War were selected and transported to Arlington with ceremonies modeled after the post-World War I process. In the Pacific, remains from four World War II unknown graves were selected randomly at ABMC's Manila American Ceremony and disinterred on April 22, 1958. The remains were then transported to Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii, where they joined two World War II unknowns from the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific, the Punch Bowl. In a selection ceremony on May 16, 1958, a single set of those remains was chosen to represent the Pacific unknowns. The five unselected remains were reinterred at the Punch Bowl, along with the unselected remains from the Korean War selection held the preceding day. For the European theater, 13 sets of unknown remains were disinterred, representing every ABMC cemetery in Europe and Africa, other than the Cambridge and Epinal. One set of remains was rejected due to possible identifying information, and an alternate was disinterred and substituted. The remains were brought to Epinal American Cemetery, and on May 12, 1958, a solemn selection ceremony was held, during which a single set of remains was selected to represent the European theater. The unselected remains were returned to the various ABMC cemeteries where they were reburied after simple ceremonies performed by Protestant, Catholic, and Jewish chaplains. On May 26, 1958, off the Virginia Capes, the Pacific and European World War II unknown candidates, as well as the Korean War unknown, were united aboard the USS Canberra. The World War II unknowns were moved to a separate room on board and once again rearranged by a team of sailors to eliminate any connection to their theater of origin before they were moved back above deck. Navy Hospital Corpsman First Class William R. Charette, who had earned the Medal of Honor in Korea, made the final selection of the World War II unknown. The selected remains, along with the Korean War unknown, were transferred to the USS Blandy for transport to Washington, while the USS Canberra moved to deeper waters and conducted a burial at sea for the unselected World War II unknown, once again following an ecumenical service. The World War II and Korea War unknowns lay in state at the U.S. Capitol Rotunda until their funeral and interment at Arlington National Cemetery on Memorial Day, 1958. The elaborate rituals used to ensure that the unknown entombed at Arlington National Cemetery would forever be unidentified served an important symbolic function. By removing the possibility of identification, these remains stand in for every fallen American who was never identified. While the next of kin of a missing soldier could stand in front of the tomb and imagine that it was their son, father, husband, or brother buried there. In my opinion, the universality of the tomb extends even further and has come to stand for the honor and sacrifice of all of those who have paid the last full measure of devotion. This universality at the tomb has its counterpart in the walls of the missing at American Battle Monuments Commission sites around the globe. If the tomb of the unknown soldier symbolically represents all missing, they are also specifically represented at ABMC's cemeteries and memorials. Each American service member missing, lost, or buried at sea from World War I, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam is represented by name on the walls of the missing at our sites. In total, the various walls of the missing honor the memory of 4,456 missing from World War I and 78,985 from World War II. The 8,201 missing of the Korean War and the 2,504 of the Vietnam War are honored alongside their comrades from World War II at the Commission's Honolulu Memorial. Their names stand as a testament to the memory and gratitude of the country they served. Efforts continue to recover and identify as many of these unknowns as possible, and ABMC acknowledges those efforts by placing bronze rosettes next to the names of those missing who have been identified. While we will never know the names of the unknown entombed at Arlington, we know that their names are recorded somewhere among the over 90,000 names 
on ABMC's Walls of the Missing. These walls, along with the headstones of their comrades in the grave plots and the memorial architecture of the American Battle Monuments Commission's cemeteries and monuments, reflect America's commitment to ensure that time will not dim the glory of their deeds.